Welcome to The Next Level, a brand new series on AACPS TV. I'm Katie Holmes. On this show, we feature senior athletes going on to play at the college level. Today, I am excited to have the seniors of the team and the coach with me. The Lady Gophers and two coaches are here to share their personal story and their journey to the states. A first state title for girls basketball in Glen Burnie history. I have invited them on to share their story through a team lens and share what life has been like since winning the state title. We're gonna talk about what school has been like since winning. I also want to mention that the team has won the Mildred Haney Murray Girls Basketball Sportsmanship Award. What an honor it is to welcome the senior state champs, Lady Gophers and coaches. Please welcome senior Aisha Samaro, number 30. Senior Amori Porter, number 15. Senior Layla Washington, number 34. Senior Lania Nick, number 21. Senior Cassidy Wilkerson, number 11. And Senior Dontasia Washington, number 42. Thank you all for being here today. We're gonna jump right in and we're gonna share your story of getting to the state. Congratulations to all of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a couple questions individually that I'd like to ask you all, and then we're going to collectively talk as a team. My first question is for you, Layla. As a team, do you have any rituals or superstitions before a match or during competitions? Uh, we have superstitions and things that we do before every game all season. Um, Cass and some other teammates, they eat Slim Jims. Some of us do our hair certain ways. We stretch in a certain order. We keep things, we keep to our routine to ensure that nothing goes wrong. Okay, I know, Lenny, I've seen blue Gatorades behind you most of the season. Yeah. That's a superstition? I mean, no, it's just good. Which is good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aisha, what is your favorite memory or moment as a student athlete? Um, I have to say, as a Throughout my whole, I want to say high school, basketball career, whatever, um, just being able to create new bonds through playing basketball, meeting new people and becoming close. So probably just making new friends. New friends. Cassidy, what was the most challenging game you had this year? Uh, it's a different, it's a split between Mercy and St. Francis because those were the two games we lost. But they were both like very tough fought games. We just couldn't push through all the way and finish and complete the mission. So that really hit me hard. Those were the toughest for you. Yeah. Probably as a team also, right? Yeah. Yes. Nia, what advice would you give to a student athlete just starting to play sports in high school? Um, first of all, just work hard. Uh, don't let the little things bother you or like get in the way of what you want to accomplish while you're throughout your high school career. That's great advice. Amori, my previous guest, is back with us. What does it take mentally and emotionally to be a successful athlete? It takes obedience and discipline to work hard, work on things that you're really uncomfortable doing, and not only working on your physical, but also working on your mental as well, because when you get in those challenging, the, that adversity, when that hits, you got to be able to get through it and the unseen hours the unseen hours are really crucial those times where you don't even want to get up or you don't want to get some shots in or anything along those lines those are the times where you really got to dig deep and do it because the hard work pays off so i'd say discipline is really key you guys are proof hard work paid off <laughs> don Tasia, how has playing sports helped you grow as a person um, it helped me see a lot of things from like a different perspective on and off the court. It helped me like, like really like being able to push myself more to like get things done the right way. And even if messing up, I can try it again, get it right. What would your fans be surprised to know about you as a team? I feel like people would be surprised to know that how much we laugh and like play around yeah. because like we're on the court, we're really serious. Like we're getting the, like we're going to get the job done, but off the court, we're all just real goofy. We have a good time, but yeah, I think that's something that would be really surprising, especially for me. Cause I'm really serious on the court, but I, I play around a lot. Like there's times where I'll just be just laughing, just, you know, 
I would agree with that. When I first came out and met you all, I was really surprised by how <laughs> funny you guys were, how much you did laugh. Um, so that, that was a good point. Thank you for sharing that, Amori. <laughs> what values have you learned from being part of a team? Like all of you, just this whole experience this year. I know a lot of you have played for four years. What values did you, do you think being a part of a team instills in you that you're going to take with you as you move on and graduate from high school? That it's not all about yourself. Yeah. That's a good to, one. You just have to spread it evenly throughout everybody. I, I found that playing with teams, they forced me to be accountable and hold myself mm -hmm. accountable. Accountability is a big thing with the team because when it comes to a team, you're not just playing for yourself, you're playing for others. So even if I don't feel like coming to practice, I need to come to practice and work hard because they are relying on me coming to practice to work hard. And the team is relying on me to come and practice, work hard, so that we can be successful. That's what I was getting at when I was talking to you earlier, Dante. It was like mm -hmm. you're you're held accountable as a team when you're a part of a team. Mm -hmm. I feel like honesty is one too. Like you got to be honest with yourself. Like what are your true intentions? And I think either way, if you are lying, you like the team will know. Like just honesty and accountability go hand in hand. I think. That's a good point. That's a very good point. What did it feel like playing on a bigger stage that night? Like you were on a bigger court, it's 10 feet bigger. You know, so that night you, you get there, you ride a bus to the Xfinity Center, it's the University of Maryland. So to, to walk onto that court and actually bounce a basketball, what did that feel like? I mean, it's a dream come true. I mean, it felt like we earned it because we put the hours and the work in every day after school, whether it's raining outside, whether it's too hot, like, whether if we didn't have a good day at school, it felt like we earned to be there. We deserved to be there. So what was the bus ride like there? It was raining that night, you know, <laughs> that whole day. What, what was the bus ride like? We were all asleep. Yeah, everybody yeah. was asleep. <laughs> it, was, it was silent. silent. <laughs> it's, an, it's another way we lock in before a game, mm -hmm. and Every, it's an away game. Everyone puts their headphones in. Some take naps. Some just stare out the window. We all... We don't talk on the bus. It's, it's rare we have music because we all are just silent and we're focused, mm -hmm. mentally preparing ourselves for what's to come. So y'all had earbuds in. Hoodie up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Laying Way down in the back. <laughs> laying, laying across like legs one on the top of each other, just laying down in the back, sleep. Yeah. Or just <laughs> laying on your bag. <laughs> How did it feel to see all the fans? show up for you. I mean, it wasn't even just Glen Burnie. You know, you had fans throughout the entire county showed up. I know that there were other schools that were wearing red for you that day. You know, what does that feel like? Um, I think it feels good to know that we have that support, but at the same time, it's more of, you know, I think we, when you look out there, you do see all those fans, but you see the fans that were there from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So not only does that give you motivation, like the people that are switching up on us, mm -hmm. but it also shows us who's like who's true to us, who's real, who's going to have our back. No matter what, win or lose, they're still going to be there. So I think it just instilled some sort of confidence and some comforting in a sense. I mean, I was there that night. Go for a nation was huge, <laughs> huge. So when you, you know, I have actually have some video of it that um, I'll share with you, but I mean, I'm sure you it was just loud. I mean, did you hear it when you were on the when you were on the court? Did you hear the fans? Some, I mean, sometimes. Yes, yeah, no. right. It's like sometimes you zone out of all the noise, and then some moments you hear the noise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know me personally. I tune everything out when I'm on the court. Like sometimes it's hard for me to hear Amari, to hear coach. So I primarily hear the fans when I'm on the bench and sitting on the bench cheering my teammates on and hearing the stands of people cheering for my teammates and me. It's like almost exhilarating like it gives you a different type of motivation like I'm not just playing for me I'm not just playing for my teammates I'm not just playing for my coaches I'm playing for the school the county I'm like we're here we were there representing Anne Arundel County mm -hmm. absolutely you were what adjustments did you have to make knowing that that court is 10 feet bigger running stamina <laughs> spacing spacing that's it because we run the press whole game so running well me I'm always up top so I have to run back and forth for a long period of time. It's really tiring. <laughs> Communication, too. Like, having to be louder because it was just a big arena and there were so many people. It was just out of, like, yeah. 
That's how they generally come out. How did you prepare for that? Well, I feel like we've been preparing our whole season because we, we run a lot in practice. So we work on running a lot. So I feel like we were prepared, but physically when we got there, we didn't really expect it to be that big. Mm-hmm. But we've, we've been prepared to run. I have a special little basketball player that is just starting her basketball career, and she says that all of you are her idols. She has attended many of your games this season. She wrote down some questions that she would like to ask, and I would like to know if you guys would help me give her the information and give her a confidence booster that she can do it. It's gonna take hard work, but it's obtainable, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) She wants to know, do all of you do anything special to get ready for a game? Yes. Yeah. Me personally, I always tell my mom I need a Slim Jim and a white Gatorade, and it gets me through the game. What about you, Layla? Um, on the away games, every away game, I would go to the concession stand, and I would get a pack of Airhead Extremes and a Sprite, and I would eat that for every game. And it just, the sugar gets your energy going. It gets you going. What about you, Nia? Um, I used to drink energy drinks, but then Coach Boyer told me they were bad for me, so I stopped. <laughs> and then, but yeah. Or we make TikToks before games sometimes. That's like a team thing we do. Okay. Yeah. Amori, what do um, you do? I listen to instrumental music, and I think about <laughs> poetry. <laughs> I think about my poetry because, like I said, um, poetry is an art, and I think basketball is an art too. So the way I look at it is a little different. So when I read the words... I see myself playing. I listen like it's all about fluidity, and the same thing is with writing. So, mm-hmm. instrumental music is my thing. Okay. How do you deal with the pressure of having to play in front of a crowd? You know, as a, as a new, you know, basketball player starting out, she is much younger. She's not used to the crowds. So, what can advice can you give her to kind of maybe sound out the noise a little bit? Um, I just you should just lock in like just don't listen to the outside noise because like that's gonna mess you up while you're playing you're gonna think about oh I have to hit this shot oh I have to make this shot the more you think about it it's gonna mess you up so you just have to just play freely just play like it's your last game you just play and cancel out all the noise I feel like being confident is a big thing like you got to be confident in your game all that work that you put in it what other people have to say shouldn't deter you from what you know how to do so I'm just saying you know be present know what you know what you're capable of don't be shy don't change up because he's in this fan I mean, in the stands but just you know play your game play your game mm-hmm. and you have to know everyone is against you that's something we're told all the time you have you do have true fans but then there are people who think they know better there are people who say you could have hit this shot you could have made this pass you have to be confident in the times you and the time you put it in practice mm-hmm. and your training you do all that training for a reason and trust it. Don't ha- listen to what others have to say because at the end of the day, you, your coaches, your teammates, you put in that work and that time for a reason. That's great advice. That's great advice. What is your favorite thing about playing basketball? I'm going to start with you, Dantasia. My favorite thing about playing basketball? Really, I'll, I'll see, I just like to shoot. <laughs> Cassidy, what about you? Definitely the bond is you get when you stay around the team long enough. You It starts to build it as a family. So then, like, somebody's picking on somebody outside of school, and now you're, like, the older sister to somebody. Like, you can't you can't mess with her because she's with me. So the, the unity between us is fun. That bond. After winning the state championships, you have been able to experience a lot of different celebrations. I mean, there's been, I know, pep rallies. Like, the news came out. You went to the state house. Can you describe what it has been like since winning state championship? I just feel like a new person, honestly. Oh, sure. yeah. Like I already knew I was, I was cool or whatever. But like just like now winning state it gives me another title to my name. Like walking around just being able to say I'm a state champ is like something a lot of people can't say. Absolutely. What about you, Maury? Um. Like, I know we, we've talked before. You've been a previous guest. <laughs> and you said, I asked you that you were going to make, you know, you were going to achieve over 1,000 points. And you told me very quickly it was not about the points, mm-hmm. that it was about winning states. Mm-hmm. Here you are four months later with that state title. Yep. Um, I feel good. Like, I always feel good. I mean, 
I wouldn't say that I feel like a new person, but I would say that, um, like I said, I know who I am. I know what I can do. I mean, I was expected to, you know, we were expected to win that state championship. So when they're coming out here with all these, you know, the pep rally and stuff, it's more like, to me, it's like they didn't believe of us, mm-hmm. believe in us in a sense. So like I always say, don't switch up now that we've won states, you know, keep the same energy because it's always our girls versus everybody else. I always say that our girls, family, sisters, anything along those lines. So it would, I would say that I feel exactly the same because I mean, I, they're still on my side. Nobody's messing with us, you know? Right. Layla, I want to talk to you about that because that was potentially your last game you're going to play, correct? Mm-hmm. Correct. Can you tell us why? Um, I have officially committed to attending Baylor University in Waco, Texas. Um, on the pre-med track, I will be studying biology in hopes of becoming a doctor one day. Congratulations. <laughs> so you. your last game was a state championship that you won. Yes. It feels... It felt really great to go out like that. Like if I was gonna last year, we couldn't finish it, and so this year, to finish it and to win that state championship, to win that title, to win that ring, the trophy, all of it, it just felt so nice to know that we as a group could finally do it. That I could contribute what I need to contribute for us to win that. That we've worked all this time. Like it's not like we worked for nothing. Like we've proved that our hard work was for something. Wow. Talk, tell me about the pep rallies that Glen Burnie had and, and what it was like to have your, you know, peers congratulate you. I mean, I know there's big celebrations at Glen Burnie. Somebody, Aisha, you want to tell me about the pep rallies? I mean, and it was also the cheerleading team also won state. So I know it was like a combined, you know, school celebration, which was great. But fill me in on the Glen Burnie vibe. What was going on? I um. mean... The pep rally was, it was nice. It was good to get recognition for the hard work that we did throughout the whole season. Um, It felt good to see, like, our classmates and peers supporting us even after, you know, we won our games and the season is over. It felt good to still being able to hear everybody realize that we won states. When did it hit you that you won? Right at that moment? Like, a when you guys were all collectively together and hugging each other, I mean, when that final buzzer went off, you were on top. Is that when it hit you? Did it hit you on the bus ride home? You know, when did it hit you? Before yeah. the game even started. Before the game even started, that you were there. Away. Yeah. I mean, I know we didn't come all the way, just in that one. That was just, that we were not going out like that. That was just not, <laughs> no, we were just not going out like that. Cassidy, when did it hit you? I don't even think it hit me at all. <laughs> Same I, has it hit like, you yet? Like, I'm still in a basketball mindset. Like, I got practice tomorrow, and I don't. <laughs> so you miss it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just going home and just knowing, like, I don't got practice. Then what? Like, it was our last game of the season. Then what? Amori, did it hit you right away? No. Well, for me, it hit me when I was writing my letter to you know turn in my bag because I, I wrote a letter to the next 15 when I was writing the letter it then it really hit me like I'm a state champion you know the season's over that was my last game that was the last time wearing number 15 like I think it really really like I was it was bittersweet I was happy that you know we were able to accomplish that but at the same time I was like that's my last game and it's not even that I'm not going to see them but it's not the same because when you're on the court it's like you're it's different. Like the connection is just beyond, like it's beyond words. So I just say, yeah, that's when it hit me when I was writing that letter. What is that letter? You just called it the letter to the next 15? To the next 15, yes. So tell me about it. It basically says like what it means to wear the number 15. Like not anybody can just wear my number. Okay. Because it takes, like you're going to have some weight on your shoulders. You know, there's going to be a lot of pressure, but at the same time you have, you you have, you the persona that you are, you have to be able to take that and use it. Like, use that energy. Use that pe- the people that are against you. Use the crowd pressure. Use the talk. Use what people have to say. Like, you have to be able to do that if you want to wear the number 15. So all of you had that opportunity to write that letter. Oh, I, no. I did. Well, my letter's still pending because because <laughs> like, I still have to find the right words to say because, like I said, like, this whole experience is, like, it's still not hit me. So... My letter, I know I'm going to get in deep, but I haven't voted yet. Well, I just want to say 
Thank you, Lady Goodverse, for being here today. Congratulations. It was a lot of fun for me personally to be able to come out. I mean, I knew Amori um, and to watch her season. And as I watched her, I watched all of you. And I started to really like, I was like, oh, Nia's got a great three-pointer. I was like, Aisha, she's underneath that basket. Cassie, she can move that ball. Layla's good. Like, Dantasia hit that, you know, basket. I was so happy. I was like, congratulations. Like, it just really was through her that I was able to really get to know you guys. I know you didn't know me, but to watch you all season. I mean, people will tell you, I talk about you guys a lot. Like, congratulations. I was there that night and saw you and was so very excited for you. Thank you, Lady Gophers, for being here today. I want to congratulate your entire team on winning the first state championship title in Glen Burnie High School's history. What a legacy to leave behind as you all graduate this year. We are very proud of your accomplishment. We will be right back after this short break with the head coach, Sam Porter, and assistant coach, Rev Stock, and hear their thoughts on winning the state championship for the first time in Glen Burnie history. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Bedell, and I am proud to be the superintendent of Anne Arundel County Public Schools, a district of 85,000 students and 14,000 dedicated employees. We are on our way to be in the best school system in Maryland, and we could use your help to get there. Consider one of these many careers with us. So what are you waiting for? Apply today and help students like these be AACPS Awesome! We are back and I would like to introduce head coach of the girls varsity basketball team, Sam Porter. Also assistant coach, Craig and Rebstock. Thank you both for being here today. Congratulations on winning states. Thank you. Thank you. Let me start and ask you, just go back to the beginning of the season. What kind of goals did you set for your team this year? To win states. That was it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything else didn't matter. It didn't matter. That's We've what... been there and done that. So that was the goal. That was the goal. So you've been head coach for three years. Correct. You've been an assistant coach for five years. Yes. What, what's your record this year? 24 and two. 24 and two. Yep. I know the girls were just on. They had talked about those two losses. What, what, when you lost, what was the important piece to teach the girls about you're not going to win every game? But we don't try to lose. We don't try to lose. Yeah, we, we, don't, we don't like to lose. But at the same time, sometimes, you know, you can learn from you it. You can learn from you it. You can learn from it. And um, it hit the girls hard, real hard. And next day in practice, like, all right. I feel for whoever plays us next. It's on. <laughs> it's on. At the start of the year, you knew that most of your team, that they were seniors, and that this would be their last year. How did this play a factor into your coaching this year? Uh, what do you think, Coach? I mean, I think at the end of last season, our goal was just to win a state championship this year. So I don't think we really changed our goals or what we were doing more so. We just made sure that we really honed in on working hard and getting to that um, state championship. Yeah. Let's talk about that night, getting there. What did it, I mean, I know, what did it feel like for you as the coaches? It was awesome. Um, the girls were pretty loose. Um, I don't know, it was just awesome. Like. We knew we were supposed to be there. We knew we were going to win. Um, even though we had some ups and downs, you know, during the game, it was like, this is ours. This is ours. You were coming to get it. Yeah, yeah definitely. Absolutely. When did it hit you that you actually won state championship the first time in the history of Glen Burnie High School? When did it hit you? I don't <laughs> think it still hit me yet. Honestly, yeah. I don't. Um, it's been awesome though. I'm an alumni, so being able to come back and coach, like I wanted this for the girls so bad. So just seeing them being able to like enjoy all these things um, and be celebrated, like they really earned it. Yeah, I know that you guys just recently went to the state house. What was that like for you guys? I mean, you're being a celebrated throughout the county, pep rallies at the school, the state level. Yeah. What is that like? 
For me, it's all about the team. It's all about the team. When my girls are happy, I'm happy. When something's bothering them, then I'm upset. So for me, just to sit back and watch them enjoy themselves, I'm good. I mean, Coach Porter said that this is like a, has to be a little bit sweeter for you. You know, here you are at your first state championship win as a coach. It's the first in Glen Burnie's high school history. And you did it with your daughter on your team and it's her senior year. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, she's a mini me. So, you know, <laughs> we go back and forth, but at the end of the day, she knows where my heart is. You know, I'm all about the team, all about the community. Um, but she knows where, I'm, where my heart is, you know. I care for her, definitely. Um, I do anything for her, but at the same time, I have 11 others that I have to care for, and they, they, they all know I love them. Mm. You know, I'm tough on them, but I love them. What made this team special this year? Like, if you could pick one thing, I know it's really hard, and I'm asking mm. some really tough questions, but it's, you to get where you are and to be able to reflect back and be like, what was so special about this team? Is it their energy? I mean, I know just being around them the few times I've been around them, there, there's a sisterhood there that just seems unmatched. But, you know, you know them more than I do. So, like, what made that, like... I was going to say, like, they've grown so much. Yes. Like, I've been able to see some of them as freshmen on JV mm -hmm. to now, and then even some that um, came to us a little bit later. Like, even just over the season, they've grown a lot, they've matured a lot, and, I mean, they're all just really awesome young ladies. So I think that's what makes them special. They really yeah. are. Very special. Um, I don't know. It's... We're close. You are. You They're do a lot close. of team outings together. I mean, just I know that the girls love to eat. You know. Yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> tell, yes. Tell, tell me about that. <laughs> Let me like, see that side of them. Um, they're different, but like yesterday we had pizza, and um, I had to order a special pizza for Aisha. Um, <laughs> I walk in the gym while they're eating the pizza. Nia, she has a box of pizza, you know, to herself. So, <laughs> I mean, it's just then they put Amari's pizza to the side. It's you know, I don't yeah. know, they're special. Um, yeah. They're definitely special. I want to jump back to that night at the, at the Xfinity Center and ask you guys, you know, what it felt like for you to see all the support. I mean, the Gopher Nation was out and cheering and loud. And, you know, how did, like, when you're out there, do you hear the crowd? I mean, was that something that you were able to really embrace and say, wow? Well, I didn't hear it until after. <laughs> I get locked in, and the girls, they'll tell you, I'm, when I'm locked in, I'm locked in. I don't worry about who's there, mm -hmm. you know. But after the game, I was like, oh, yeah, Gopher Nation showed out. The county showed out. So I, I was, like, pretty excited about that. What was the bus ride home like? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, it was loud. <laughs> it was very loud and they were singing and I'm just chilling with the trophy. Uh, but like I said, as long as they're happy, mm -hmm. I'm happy. And that's why, you know, we push them. We push them. We know what, you know, they're capable of doing. So it was loud. Oh, it Did it hit you when you got on the bus that like, wow, we did it. Like, when did it hit the two of you? For me, it I don't know. I it think, hasn't hit me yet. I was going to say, um, him and I and uh, one of our other coaches, we were walking out, just kind of us as a group at the end with the trophy and just kind of having like a moment between us all. And I think then, like, we got to be like, wow, like, we did it, you know, yeah. and kind of, like, reflect on that. But, again, I just I don't think it still feels, you know, kind of like Cass was saying, like, it feels like we have practice tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was a good point that she yeah. did make. What advice do you have for your girls? And I'm sure that you've shared this with them, but I just want our viewers to see like what advice that you've given those senior girls that were just here as they move on to play at the next level. What's the advice that you're giving them? First is trust yourself. Trust the work you put in. You know, it's going to be talk, you know, just, you know, brush that off. That's for you, Aisha. And, you know, just keep doing you. Keep doing you and it'll pay off. Definitely. What do you think, Coach? Uh, just working hard and separating yourself from others and making sure that you're doing the right thing, doing what you're supposed to be doing. 
Yeah, that's great advice. Well, congratulations to Thank you, you two. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, to the girls for playing. And I know we have, I, I want to make this very clear that there's a, more to your team than just the six that were here. Yes. Um, this show, we do highlight seniors, so I've asked them to come on, but I want to congratulate your entire team for um, and your other coach that's not here with us today because it's collectively a team win. Absolutely. So thank you very much for being here today. Thank, thank you for you. having us. I like to close our show with a quote from an inspiring athlete. Talent wins games, but teamwork and intelligence wins championships, said one of the greatest basketball players of all time, Michael Jordan. I would like to thank you for joining us on The Next Level. I'm Katie Holmes and hope that you will join us next time.